On that note, let's also take you to Brussels now, the interview we promised. European parliamentarians are discussing as many as six resolutions against India in Brussels. All of them, all the resolutions are critical of the Citizenship Amendment Act, but one resolution in particular is making all the headlines. And this one has been introduced by a man called Shafak Mohammed. He is a British lawmaker who has moved one of the resolutions. Shafak Mohammed was born in Mirpur in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. At the age of four, he moved to the United Kingdom. Mohammed was elected to the European Parliament last year. But since then, he has taken critical positions against India's Kashmir decisions as well as the CAA. His critics say that he is towing Pakistan's line by criticizing India and Europe. Earlier today, we spoke to Shafak Mohammed and we started by asking him if he had in fact read the Citizenship Amendment Act that he was protesting. Have I gone through the note? I've, I've not gone through each line by line, but I've been briefed on the main points of the law. Uh, the, our particular worry is the issue around the discriminatory nature of the act itself. I don't have an issue. Uh, I welcome the fact that India wants to give us asylum to people persecute, being persecuted. The only issue I have is that that should be done for all and no particular group or groups of people should be excluded from that. So that is really the issue that myself and other colleagues have is the discriminatory nature of the act itself as opposed to uh, India giving asylum to uh, you know people from its neighbouring countries. Discriminatory nature, you say, you claim the law is discriminatory. It does not apply to Indian Muslims, by the way. It does not deny asylum to Muslims from neighboring countries. So what specifically is discriminatory and what is it that you object to? Well, that's the issue, isn't it? That's the crux of it. You know, as myself and other colleagues here feel that no, you know, that if, if India wants to show compassion, then it should show compassion across the board. When it starts to say you are more deserving than this group of people, that's when the issue becomes. And that's why we think, and it's our opinion, and we have a right to express that opinion, you have a right to disagree with us, that we think that there should not be any discrimination when it comes to asylum. And that's the only differences I see we have. I mean, there's other areas of disagreement as well, but when, in particular to this Act, that that's where the disagreements are. And, you know, Amnesty International and others have also said that. So it's not just a case of me and... Uh, you know, I don't know how many how many MEPs it is now at the moment because the deadline to co-sign it is 12 o'clock today, this resolution. The resolutions by the European Parliament, by the way, as you would know, are not binding on India. The European Union is already distancing itself from these resolutions. Then what do you hope to achieve by moving them? Look, at the moment, this is not being voted through. So at the moment, it's just a resolution in draft form. It might go through, it might fall, you know. Uh, I think what will happen is if, if this goes through, and the likelihood is, you know, that given that six of the main groups have all been part of actually sitting down together in a room last Thursday and going through line by line, paragraph by paragraph, uh, I mean, I don't know if I can show you, but this is the working document, my original resolution, and the ticks were the things everybody agreed, the crosses were the things that they didn't agree. And I conceded some points of my original resolution to them. So, you know, this is this has been jointly done. It's not a thing that I've just made up in my office and thought I could do. You know, this is, uh, you know, we have to compromise sometimes. You know, we did make changes to the text. There were some bits that I wasn't willing to accept in the main text. I think it was taking us in a different place. I said to them, you put that in as an amendment and let Parliament vote on it. And I really think that, look, India needs to have a period of reflection. When I say India, I mean the government. And we have to separate out the people, the country and the government. And it's for the government to go away and have a period of reflection because that's what happens in our country here. And I want to help India to, to make the right decision. And I just think if they make the right decision in the sense of say we will give asylum to whoever's been persecuted regardless of your background, that would be a very powerful statement. And then you can go and tackle the neighbouring countries and say, hey, what about your human rights records? What about your uh, situations? You know, so we, we want to be a friend that challenges all of them. You know, it's not just a case of, oh, you know, we're going to pick on India. No, actually, there's issues in neighbouring countries that also need to be challenged. And we give mention to that in the resolution.
help India. I'm not sure anyone in India sought help. But a report claims that the resolution moved by you is being backed by Pakistan. How do you respond to a charge like this? Uh, I, I, I say, look, I'm my own man. I challenge you. I challenge anyone that makes those allegations to look at me, who I am, what my background is, where I come from, more importantly, what are the causes I've been involved in. Uh, in this parliament, you can see from my Twitter account. Uh, I'll tell you, in the next 10 minutes, I'm meeting the Bahrainians to discuss human rights issues with them. Um, I meet with the Tamils from uh, Sri Lanka. I've also met, look at my Twitter feed, uh, I've met with the Hong Kong Chinese. We were very vocal against China. Uh, so therefore, this is not one individual picking on India. I Okay, let, let me show you our, this is our agenda from November. What well, my colleagues have talked about, we talked about Sri Lanka and the issues around the Tamils. We talked about three political opponents arrested in Algeria. We also then talked about uh, Iraq, the situation in Iraq. Then we talked about freedom and a journalist in Burundi. And we've also got issues of political repression in Cuba. We also issues in Iran, human rights in Bahrain, which my colleague Martin has also raised, Hong Kong by Anthony Hook. So look, I will say to you, look, uh, look at my track record rather than making allegations. I'm an independent thinker, and I've got a reputation to keep, and I'm in no pocket of any government. I will say what I want to say, what I feel is the right thing, and I will stand up for what I see as my own values and my European values, which are about human rights, civil liberties, and I will champion them across the world, no fear, no favour. Since you keep directing me to your Twitter feed, people point out your Pakistani origin on Twitter and elsewhere, and that puts a question mark on the credibility of your resolution. First of all, I can't change who I am. I can't change who my grandfather was, who I don't even remember seeing. I can't change who my father was, who died 24 years ago, right? So my background is what my background is. I live in the United Kingdom. This is where my family is. We've been, my family has been here since the 1950s. OK, so if people want to look at me and look at me and say, is he one of us or one of them? Hey, that's your choice. I'm British. OK, I'm elected by the British population in Yorkshire to represent the British values in this parliament. And part of our values in Britain is we respect human rights and dignity and fairness and equality. And that's what drives me. Now, if people want to throw allegations that I belong to this group of people, that group of people, look, I have challenged Pakistan. The only issue I want to explain to you is that when we deal with issues, they've got to be of urgency here and now, right? So, so the ongoing persecution of minorities in Pakistan is a long-standing issue. But if something big happens, I swear I'll, I'll be the first to raise those here. But, the, but, the, but so tell... What about the minorities in Pakistan, Mr. Mohammed? They are being targeted. We've just reported that. Is their persecution not a matter of concern to you? We can only discuss three items. My own group's got how many? Eleven. That's one group. One, eleven issues. Individual members are raised. Then the other five will also have. So then what happens is the parliament sits down and says, which of these are the most urgent that's happening right now or what's been consistently happening for years? And the, the view was that the issues in India, particularly the loss of life and violence, was the most urgent issue that we need to discuss, as well as what was happening in Burundi and what was happening in Nigeria. So that's why those three topics were taught, discussed. I'm not saying others are not deserving. Look, my colleague Sheila uh, was very happy to talk about the current situation of Tamils in Sri Lanka. But unfortunately, what we said with that one was that was an ongoing issue. Nothing, no, there had been no escalation of issues. And until that happens, then we can't take it. So people need to understand, just because we don't discuss an issue, it doesn't mean that we don't raise it, and I'd consistently raise it. And if I was in the books of Pakistan, then I say to people, read the resolution that I proposed, and look within it, in the section, there is criticism of Pakistan in paragraph C, and I stand by that. And you know what? I also criticise Bangladesh, because if those two countries had a better human rights record, then people, their residents, will not have to leave Shafak, uh, Mohammed, thanks very much for speaking with us. The European Parliament is going to debate uh, these resolutions uh, uh, later today and we'll of course be on top of that story.